Having a problem with pests in your home can be a huge inconvenience. However, the council offers a pest control service where you can get advice and help on getting rid of a range of pest problems in your home. Whether it's rats, mice, foxes or fleas, we have a series of advice leaflets available in reception areas both in Rochford and Rayleigh and on the website at www.rochford.gov.uk forward slash pest control. The leaflets contain lots of useful advice to householders about a range of different pests and how to control them. There are certain circumstances where professional treatment is required. In these cases, the council has negotiated preferred rates to get rid of pests such as rats, mice, bedbugs and wasps. And the pricing guide for pest control services are wasps and bees, £41.70, fleas and other insects, £83.40, bedbugs, £166.80, and rats and mice, £38, and the price for the last item includes VAT. In cases where a resident is in receipt of a means-tested benefit, the council will reduce the charge for insect infestations that are of concern to public health, such as fleas and bedbugs. The most important thing to do if you notice you have pests in your home is to get help. To find out about how to use this service or get advice, phone our customer services team on 01702 318 Working together, free NHS health checks. If you are between 40 and 74 years old, you can get a free NHS health check to help you prevent heart disease, diabetes, stroke and kidney disease. Your NHS health check will include blood pressure, pulse, cholesterol, BMI, body mass index, and a personalised lifestyle plan. NHS health checks assess people's risk of developing heart disease, type 2 diabetes, kidney disease, and stroke. The health check is available to people between 40 and 74 who are not already under the care of their GP for these conditions or on treatment for high blood pressure or cholesterol. Associate Director of Public Health at NHS South East Essex, Margaret Gray, said everyone is at risk of developing heart disease, stroke, diabetes or kidney disease. The good news is that these conditions can of often be prevented, even if you have a history of them in your family. Have your free NHS health check and you will be better prepared for the future and be able to take steps to maintain or improve your health. NHS health checks are being offered nationally to help prevent the onset of these health problems. Everyone between the ages of 40 and 74 who has not been diagnosed with the conditions mentioned will be invited for a check once every five years by their GP. If you are outside this age range and concerned about your health, you should contact your GP. Prevention is better than cure, so contact your GP today to book your free NHS health check. For more information, visit www.nhs.uk forward slash NHS health check. You have to act fast if you suspect a stroke. Fast is face, has their face fallen on one side, can they smile? Arms, can they raise both arms and keep them there? Speech, is their speech slurred? And time, it's time to call 999 if you see any of these signs. NHS South East Essex is supporting the Department of Health's Memorable Act Fast campaign to raise public awareness about the signs and symptoms of stroke and the need to act quickly if a stroke is suspected. Every year around 110,000 people in England have a stroke. It is the third leading cause of death and there are at least 300,000 people in England living with disabilities as the result of a stroke. There are two main types of stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke, caused when a weakened blood vessel in the brain bursts. This produces bleeding into the brain, which leads to damage. Ischemic stroke, caused by a clot of narrowing or blocking of blood vessels so that blood cannot reach a particular area of the brain. This leads to death of the brain cells due to lack of oxygen. A mini stroke is called a transient ischemic attack, or TIA. It is similar to a stroke and has the same signs, but it gets better within 24 hours. However, it could be a warning sign of a more serious stroke, and it's vital that it gets the same fast action. 
The Act Fast campaign uses a simple checklist to help everyone recognise the telltale signs of stroke and advises of the action to take. Prompt action after a stroke is vital as it can prevent further damage to the brain. A delay can result in major long-term disabilities. That is why it is crucial for as many people as possible to learn how to act fast. Are you confident you can spot the signs of stroke? You can take the interactive test online at www.nhs.uk forward slash act fast. Suspect a stroke? Act fast and call 999. Being prepared for flooding could save your life and your property. Floods can happen anywhere at any time, caused by rising groundwater, overwhelmed drainage systems, hillside runoff due to sudden heavy rain, as well as flooding from rivers and the sea. Even if you live miles from the coast or a river, flooding can affect you. You can prepare for flooding by following a few small steps to reduce the impact on your home. Step 1. Find out if you live in an area at risk from sea or river flooding and sign up to the Floodline Direct, a free service that provides warnings direct to you by telephone, mobile, SMS, email or fax. To find out more about Floodline Direct, visit www.environment-agency.gov.uk or call 0845 988 Eight, eight. Step 2. Make a flood plan and know how to turn off gas, water and electricity supplies. Step 3. Have a flood kit including a torch, wind-up radio, important telephone numbers and bottled water. Step 4. Think about what can be moved to a safe place now. Items such as photograph al albums, family videos and treasured items. Step 5. Think about what you would want to move to safety if flooding is forecast, for example, cars, furniture. Step 6. Protect your property from flooding. While it is impossible to completely flood-proof a property, there are lots of things you can do to reduce flood damage by preventing or delaying water entering your property. A range of guides can be found at www.environment-agency.gov.uk or by calling 0845 988 to help you prepare. If you own an animal or pet, then there are steps you can take to make sure they are safe if there is flooding. Here is some advice from Animal animal welfare charity, the Blue Cross, to help you prepare. Be prepared because some human shelters will not allow animals. Ring the council's emergency planning officer, Peter McKenzie, on 01702 318132 to check. Make sure your cats and dogs are wearing proper identification. The Blue Cross recommends that all cats and dogs have both a microchip and an identity tag on their collar. Make sure food and medicines are well stocked. Work out an escape route and decide if you need extra gates for emergency access to horses and other animals in fields. If there is a flood warning, bring all small animals inside and if possible take them upstairs. Move food, bedding and fresh water to somewhere safe and dry. Keep your portable pet carriers at hand. Keep familiar toys dry as animals under stress will welcome something that smells of home. Put documentation like vaccination records, your vet's details and microchip numbers in a sealed bag with any other important documents. Move horses to high ground and put your contact details on field and or stable gates so that you can be contacted in an emergency. And if disaster strikes, cats, rabbits and other small animals must be transported in suitable carriers, birds in secure cages and dogs using sturdy leashes. In cold weather, put a blanket over the carrier. Do not put water inside the carrier during transportation. 
Remember to take your animal's food, water, bowls and bedding with you. If you have no choice but to leave your animals behind, leave them shut in an inside upstairs room with ample supplies of food and water. Leave notices on external doors saying there are animals inside and contact the RSPCA. Never put your own or other human life in danger to save an animal. And for more information, visit the Blue Cross website at www.bluecross.org.uk. The humble garden shed is fast becoming a target for thieves. With security on many houses upgraded, burglars are opting for easy pickings at the end of the garden. A shed or outbuilding is often easier to break into and less likely to be alarmed, yet many carry expensive gardening tools and equipment which are easier to make off with than a computer or television. Though cheaper to buy than some household items, they carry a healthy second-hand value and are easy to sell on. The intruder may not even be intent on stealing from the shed, but simply after a tool or implement to use to break into the house itself, as was the case in a recent attempted burglary at a residence in Rochford. The advice from crime prevention experts is simple. Keep your tools under lock and key. But remember, cunning thieves won't let a padlock fitted on a flimsy clasp get in their way. Padlocks, cheap and expensive, offer little protection and thieves have been known to force open shed and roof panels to get inside. Invest in a good quality, well-designed shed and think about where you position it. Can it be seen from the house? Consider installing lights to illuminate that part of the garden and fit a mains or battery powered alarm. Also, make sure the shed is firmly anchored to the ground. It has been known for sheds to be lifted to let thieves inside. Doors and windows should be fir firmly secured. Coach bolts are preferable to screws when securing hinges and fitting window film to any glass will increase its strength. Should these exterior defences be breached, protect your possessions by fitting a wire cage inside the shed where more expensive items can be locked away. Store power tools in a lockable box secured to the floor or a wall. Anchor a thick cable to the floor and attach it to larger items, then secure with a good quality padlock. No thief wants to hang about longer than they have to, so delay the time it will take them to break into your shed. The harder you make it for them, the greater the chance they'll give it up as a bad job. And don't forget that includes bicycles too. Bicycles are best locked away in a properly secured shed or garage when not in use. Don't take a chance by leaving your bike unsecured in the garden or propped up alongside the house overnight. Police in the southeastern district dealt with 45 reported bike thefts between April and September last year. Almost a third of these involved bikes being taken from gardens. These crimes are easily prevented by storing the bike away in a shed or garage. If this isn't possible, cyclists should invest in a good quality lock and secure their bikes to an immovable object tucked away from public view if possible. Cyclists are further urged to take care of their bikes when out and about and certainly never leave them propped up outside a shop when going inside. It takes seconds for someone to ride off with it, so it really is worth taking the extra time to lock the bike to an object such as a lamppost or bike rack.